Hey guys, King Gath here with Bethesda Mod School. In this fundamentals, we're going to talk about one of the most fundamental parts of the creation engine, which is the keyword. So keywords, as you can see, they're found under miscellaneous and keyword are these list of identifiers that basically tie together different things in the game to, to common behaviors. So without getting lost in the weeds with terminology and fancy fancy speak about uh, technical things, I'm gonna talk about this from the perspective of some examples and hopefully that'll clarify the, the picture here. So um, one of the easiest ways to think about uh, keywords and their use is when you think about perks. So if you think about a perk like uh, Animal Friend or uh, Party, uh, I think it's Party Animal, the one that lets you uh, not uh, get addicted to alcohol. Um, things like that, in order to code them, you have two ways you could approach this. One would be that you could have, uh, for example, for the animal friend, you could have a list of all animals and then uh, you know check anytime one of those animals comes up and then apply that, make that perk function in that particular case. That would be a way you could do it. Um, but what Bethesda has opted for is the more systemic way, which is instead of coding to those specific characters, instead they code things uh, to keywords. And it's not always to keywords, they code to a lot of other things, but this is just one of the common ways they do this. Um, so then basically these keywords can be attached to anything and then that thing is considered an example of that. So when we talk about animals, all of the different animal races in the game, whether it be Yao Guai or uh, dogs or cats, etc., will be tagged with this keyword actor type animal. So let me just show you in the creation kit. It's not necessary to show you here in that, but uh, um, I think uh, just seeing what I mean by uh, tagging them with it will just be helpful for conceptualizing what the heck I'm talking about with these keywords. So if we go to the keywords tab, um, you can see that they will have keywords on. Now the dog, this workshop dog actor doesn't actually have it. It's probably done at the race level. Uh, and this is another Another thing that's interesting about keywords is that they kind of compound. So if they are, if they're applied to a to a record or a form that is part of another record, they're also considered applied to that record. So for example, we've got our dog here. If we go to our uh, our traits here, the the race is Raider Dog Race. So we'll go ahead and bring up the uh, race here of uh, Raider Dog Race here. And if we go to it's I can't remember where the keywords are on this. It is under if they doesn't have it doesn't have a oh here it is off on the right on the main screen. So you can see here that they've got uh, actor type animal, actor type creature, actor type dog. So those three keywords are automatically applied to any actor that is using that race. And so you'll find examples uh, throughout where that's the case, where maybe a particular form doesn't have a keyword on it, but it uses some other form in a drop down menu or something. And if that has keywords, those are going to apply as well. So now when we think about animals, so now anything with this raider dog race will any systems that are looking for a dog or an animal or a creature will all function on anybody that is that race. So keywords are a way for them to code to that. So they can design their systems like perks and such uh, to these generic categories and then they don't have to get lost in the weeds worrying about all the potential examples. So if you went the other way, let's say instead of making animal friend work toward uh, this actor type animal keyword, if they instead made it toward you know a particular set of races, well then every time new DLC came in or a mod wanted to add them, that function in the engine level would have to be re would have to be changed to allow for that particular new thing to work. So not only would that uh, make it less modular, but it would also uh, be slower because you're going to have to go through these lists of things instead of just testing uh, whether or not this keyword exists. So it's a super great way to do things in the way that Bethesda games do them. It's all Their, their games tend to be very systems run. Uh, and so you'll find throughout that different, different things are tagged with these keywords in order to allow them to have certain functionality. And sometimes when they're tagged with keywords, it's not necessarily that there's particular functionality around there. It's just that Bethesda does this in a way to make sure that if they want to introduce per, uh, certain functionality, it's naturally going to apply to those things. So they tend to use these as identifiers that they'll put on different things just in case. And I, I think it's a great it's a great practice. And I've started doing it in my mods quite a bit where uh, if, I, if I start to have a particular thing that has common characteristics across multiple items. So for example, the different plots. So uh, if you're if you're a fan of some settlements, you'll know that there are a bunch of different plots. Well, I have a in some settlements there is a keyword called uh, uh, KG Sim, which is the prefix I use, but it's a plot. 
keyword. It's a, a way to identify anything that's a plot. And all the different plot models have that applied to them. So then if I ever want to introduce some sort of mechanic or perk or anything that inv that interacts with a plot, it doesn't matter what pl plot type it is. I'll know those things are all tagged with that. Um, so some other examples that Bethesda's used that uh, you guys will all be familiar with will be inventory items. Most inventory items are tagged with different keywords. And if you search for object type in the keywords filter here, oops, object type, um, you'll see these and you can imagine automatically some of the commonalities here. So you've got things like alcohol and that would lead into that party animal where it can be, okay, if you drink something and it had the keyword of alcohol, well, now we can tie that into that perk and react accordingly. Uh, same thing for something like uh, Nuka-Cola. So there's, uh, if any of you guys uh, have played through Fallout 4 enough, you'll have inevitably have run into Sheffield who wants you to give him Nuka-Cola. I don't know that they tapped into this keyword, but theoretically you could give him any variation of Nuka-Cola. You could give him Nuka-Cola, you could give Nuka-Cola Cherry, any from the DLC if it tags into the system because all of those will have this object type nuka cola so it's again it's systemically a way for you to react to a broader category instead of having to react to the individual item so this kind of frees up uh, even from a workflow perspective it kind of frees up like the coding side to work at work at it from like i'm just going to work on this from a, at a category level and then you guys working on the individual content create can create as many variations on this particular thing and they'll still function with our systems so uh, those are the time that's most commonly the way it's used now I'm, I can go over a couple of other examples and I will of different ways that keywords are used but you'll find that they all follow that pattern of it's a way for things to work systemically targeting something that can be applied to a bunch of different scenarios and that it will work accordingly so uh, another one you'll see a common use of is the animation system it makes a lot of use of keywords so how this might work is uh, if we look at things like uh, the uh, anim archetypes, um, these will modify animations slightly. So uh, if you were to look at the list of different animations, and they might be something like standing or strafing left or uh, turning right or running, um, there's all these different animations, and many of them will have slightly altered versions for people who are in a certain uh, a certain anim archetype. And so like one of the most commons would be Mom Murphy. She's got the elderly archetype, so she's kind of hunched over a little bit and her animations are going to look a little bit, uh, uh, I wanna say stiffer, a little bit, um, uh, more, she's always going to be more hunched over and the animations will be modified to reflect that on any NPC that they detect this archetype on. So again, rather than having to create a different animation set for every character that's flagged as elderly, they can just, or for every character that's going to be elderly, they can just code it, code the animations to this anim, anim archetype keyword. They don't have to keep a list then of all the elderly NPCs. It just can be any NPC with this particular keyword on them. Some other cases that, uh, are uh, a little bit less in that um, one of the things that you can do with keywords is uh, fire off an event that triggers something to happen in the game so um, an example of the base game that uses these would be uh, something like the the workshop attack the raid system where the random npcs will come in and attack your settlements and you'll get the little notification that you've got to go and defend them and that is done with uh, a, a story manager keyword that fires off an event. And this still does kind of follow the pattern because what will happen is the keyword is used to fire the event. And then when the way the story manager works, and I'll bring it up, the story manager is very complicated, so don't, don't be too intimidated about uh, what I'm about to show you here. I'm only bringing it up for the case to show you that these keywords exist here. Uh, but if I can uh, find the workshop attack node here, and uh, uh, we can see that uh, the event data is looking for a particular keyword. So then when it's the way this basically, just a quick way, I'll end up doing a whole tons of videos on this system eventually. But uh, if you imagine this thing goes from top to bottom and just looks through each one and it's looking for the particular keyword that it fired off. So there could be multiple different events tagged with this same keyword. And again, so it's following that same pattern of it's coded to this keyword workshop event attack and there can be multiple potential branches where it would follow that match that keyword. So it's again, it's always that they're a way to kind of modify behavior and code to the, the category, you code to the keyword, and then multiple things can have that keyword and they would all work dynamically with that particular thing.
Now I'm gonna bring up one other screen here to talk about some other use cases. Again, they still follow the same pattern, but it's just uh, it's just interesting to talk about. And also, I think it's useful to know about why this particular thing exists. So if you look up, I look at the keyword screen. Um, I'm not going to talk about these particular things as we have uh, actual tutorial type lessons where it's important that you modify these different things. I'll discuss what they do, but I wanted to bring up this type because it has a list of some potential use cases, but I also wanted to talk about why this type exists in this video. And uh, generally this is for, it, there's there are probably cases where it's for performance, where there's something like the engine can iterate over all of them of a certain type and it just makes it faster. But most of the time what this type is for is to differentiate where these appear in the creation kit so for example when you're going to set up dialogue for for a character you can change their face while they're saying it so you can give them a, a facial animation so that you know if they're gonna have like a general happy appearance or angry or whatever rather than you having to sift through a list of every possible keyword it will just show you all the keywords that have this type on them so if we bring up some of these uh, anim if I scroll back up here face you can see that they have the anim face type and so this is generally as far as I know the type is generally used to determine where in the creation kit these various things show up. So um, some other use cases of uh, where some of these things come into play. Uh, attach points would be on weapons and armor. So if you think about something like weapons, most guns are going to have a barrel. So then they can just have a keyword that's, um, I don't know the exact name of the keyword, but something barrel. And that attach point keyword can be used on any different, on any weapon that has a barrel. So then rather than having to, uh, you know, when you set up your set up the different mods. So if you think about Fallout 4, it's a lot of it's one of the key components of its gameplay is customization of equipment and things like that. So you have your weapon and you can customize it. Um, so rather than having to say, OK, there's um, uh, this all these barrels attach uh, for the 10 millimeter pistol. Um, they need to know that they uh, attach specifically to the 10 millimeter at this specific point. Instead, again, it could be coded to a keyword that matches the attach point of, uh, of barrel. And on top of that, they can use multiple keywords. So they can reuse that barrel attach point on any weapon with a barrel and then add a secondary keyboard or keyword that identifies it as one for a 10 millimeter pistol. So you can actually layer these together. So um, if, we, if we talk about the, uh, the dog example that we did earlier, you saw that it had several different keywords on it that applies in many different places and so then you can narrow things down um, another one if we're talking back about the animation and the flavor you can mix and match those too so not only can it match to things like the uh, anim archetypes but it can also talk or it can also map to the injury states so there are a series of these and uh, i might have already passed them that are all based on the different injuries you've got so if you if you've watched maybe you don't see it on your own character so much in fallout 4 but you'll have noticed certainly that uh, when raiders and such that you're fighting are getting injured that uh, you know you might catch them limping along or holding an arm while they're doing other things and so those different keywords mix together to choose the final animation um, some other points dialogue subtype uh, this is something like uh, an example of use would be if you think about the the nerd rage perk when uh, when it triggers your character screams out a one of a, a few random phrases this is a way to group those phrases together so that when the code that ran, that runs that perk wants to force the player to speak, it can do it based on a dialogue subtype keyword. So then the coder who did the perk, they don't have to worry about the actual dialogue lines that can be handled by the team that works with the voice actor and they can put in, that team can put in as many of those as they want at, with it and it'll still continue to work without again the coder or whoever implemented it having to care about the specific dialogue lines they're speaking you can focus on just this type so uh, almost everywhere that you see keywords they're a way to group things together so that you're not coding to specific examples you're coding to just this I idea you're just coding to this group and then anything can exist in this group so that way you can continue to expand the game over and over again and this works so beautifully not only in a systems in the systems game for itself but also for the fact that these are heavily modifiable games so then mod authors can extend that and add more versions of these particular things and automatically tap into those systems themselves so uh, this is uh, one of uh, many uses of keywords here are uh, uh, are the animations and the different tie-ins there the uh, 
the different object types, uh, the dialog. There's just so many different ways. They all they all work out the same way. Um, and this was really important that I get set down before we get into uh, the topic of linked references, which will likely be a follow-up video getting released immediately after that, which can also use keywords to differentiate themselves. So, so many uses for keywords. Um, they're just a great systemic way or a great way to build a systemic game engine so that you don't have to worry about the final.